Cavalier 4-1 and Charlie Troop 1st of the 9th in Vietnam. And we were a hunter-killer squadron for the 1st Cav Division, Air Mobile. And we would go out and search for the bad guys. And that was our job. So uh, if you were flying a Cobra, you'd have a little bird down on the deck, jungle, making circles, looking for them. And if they got shot down, the Hueys would go in and pick up the guys that got shot down. Of course, the Cobra would be there to support you and support the little bird. So I have flown Huey, I flew gunships, and I flew, we did about all of it, but we weren't always ready. I flew in the scouts every once in a while because I'd be bored. And then I'd go get in the front seat of a Cobra because somebody might want a day off. And so, yes, we both basically did about everything. We had to go to LZ David in Cambodia the first time in 1970. There was a LERP team that had been ambushed, and one man made it out and got back to LZ David. He almost got shot trying to come into the wire because he was try he was alive and trying to get help for the rest of the people. Two were killed, and two he had dragged off and hid. And so we went up there. The weather was really bad, and we took three Hueys, three 086s, and three Cobras. So we're going up there, and as we're going there, we're going low level because we had very low cloud cover in Cambodia, and I'm, I've been in country two weeks, maybe two weeks, and I'm looking, I'm driving, flying, and I look over to the left, there's a kid riding an elephant. Now, how often do you see a, a, a kid riding an elephant, you know, and I'm going, would you look at that, you know, and, and we got on up there and did what we needed to do. We got this man, we went hovering down the road to pick where he could see where his people, where he had hit them, but they had already, the Vietnamese, the Viet Cong had already got them, take, taken them off, so. And we spent the night at LZ David. They had almost been overrun a week before. We had, we had Alpha Troop and Charlie Troop there, so we had six Cobras, six OH-6s, and six UH-1s outside the wire. So we knew we were going to get hit that night again. We absolutely knew it. And as we're, they put all of us kind of, we had bunkers, the infantry had bunkers there. So they put me in a bunker with them. And I'm trying to sleep. Of course, I've been there a whole two weeks, and I'm going, I don't know if I'm going to make it another week or not. You know. <laughs> so anyway, I'm laying there asleep, and all of a sudden this thing hits me on my chest, this thump. And I opened my eyes and I looked, this is the biggest rat I've ever seen in my life. And I knocked him off and I went, okay, that's enough of this rat. So I get down, get out, and I go to the operations and one of our pilots, one of our senior pilots is getting ready to go home in two weeks with an ops. And I said, Captain, there's a bed for you in there. If you can deal with the rats, you've got two weeks left. I'm not going to deal with him. I'll sit up all night. And he said, well, I can deal with him. So he went over there and went to bed and I'm kind of sitting there, and the colonel's aide, well, he said, well, I got a place, I'll put you up. And they had like a half a culver, you know, like a, the culvers you have under a road, the, the middle. Well, they had a half of a big culver, and you had to bend down under it, and they would cover them with sandbags, and that's what they was living in. They'd put the front, have a mosquito net. Well, he had a cot in there and a few of his little personal items. Well, he pulled his air mattress off, and laid it down for me on the ground. I thought, well, you know, that's fine. I can do that. I'd rather be here than with the rats. I'm laying there asleep, just happy as could be, and the next thing I know, I'm starting to get wet. Well, it's raining. The air mattress is sticking outside, and it's running right down that air mattress right on my back. And so I got up cold and wet. I'm going, well, this is not going to work. And about that time, it was starting to deflate. It was just going flat, and I'm like, this is wonderful. What am I going to do? You know, I got another, how many weeks in the country? 50? And so I sit there, put my back against the wall, and close my eyes, and about that time, somebody flipped the mosquito net back, and they said, we've got dinks in the wire. And I, of course, my eyes got about yay big. And I went, oh, my God. You know, here it is. We're coming. And the guy said, okay. You stay here. You stay in here. The way we identify each other, we wear our helmets, and you guys don't have the helmets. 
because it's not, I mean, you couldn't see this far. He said, that's the way we identify. We shoot at people that don't have helmets. And I went, I I'll stay here, but you better say something, because if you come in, I'm going to shoot your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm not going to make it. I, I'm not going to make it. I'm, I'm just a, I'm a kid from Nakoma Park, Oklahoma, that has never been shot at before in his life. And I'm thrown into a situation I've never even dreamt of. Anyway, I'm sitting there ready to take somebody out. So they come in or try to throw a sexual charge in. And he comes back in. He says, relax. I'm going, okay. It was false. We had the radar turned around backwards. It was picking up our people. My heart just went, huh. and then, of course, I couldn't sleep the rest of the night. You know, I'm sitting there doing, okay, now I'm wide awake. It's just like taking a pill to stay awake. But that was my first time, my first big mission in Vietnam. 